Here, have you had a look at London lately? Well, I have, and it breaks me flipping hot. With blooming great bulldozers, giant hammers, blinking drills, and soft blimey mate, they're tearing it apart. You've got to get out. Get out in the bath. To see all London town. Everything is changing, it's horrible, I'd say. Looming blocks of concrete, they are going up each day. You've got to get out. Get out and about. I'm a cockney and it makes me proud. And my advice to you is go and have a look around. Before they pull the old place down. Cheer up, my friend. Forget your sad refrain, for London Town is climbing up again. The city holds a festival for you, blessing the old, but beckoning the new. The Mansion House. Rose rockets light the scene, and beaming aldermen await the Queen. The city. Many a king has craved a smile from this minute but masterful square mile. Elizabeth I was pleased to meet the merchant fathers who supplied the fleet. Elizabeth II meets the crowd. Magog and Gog, the giants, do her proud. The city. In this peaceful citadel, not only wealth, but wit and wisdom dwell. Bankers and brokers in battalions, yes. But there are courts and lawyers, and the press. If high finance should ever fly too high, some sturdy dogs will know the reason why. And passing mammon is reminded daily how near is Lombard Street to the Old Bailey. Except the monarch, nobody I know commands such magic as the Lord Mayor's show. The troops assemble in a city yard, marine, and household cavalry and guard. And here some mere civilians encroach, the noble horses of the Lord Mayor's coach. They love their dressy days, but all the year contentedly deliver London's beer. There goes the coach of our chief magistrate, and who dare say the horse is out of date? Thus my Lord Mayor keeps the customs green that first began in, listen, 1215. Old England ever had the sage design to save the bottles, but improve the wine. Hang out the flags. St. Paul's is standing still. Red roses grow upon the ruined hill. And these cold Britons, if you give them wings, can do the most extraordinary things. The Thames no more will freeze to make a fair, but oxen can be roasted anywhere. Singing in Lime Street, native dancers too. They don't live here, but let's pretend they do. Dance on, proud citizens, beneath your dome. With luck, you'll catch the 11.30 home. At night, the city loses all her sheep. Here, thousands sweat, but hardly any sleep. Fireworks delight you. But though we admire, how strange to see the city play with fire. Hair of the dog, perhaps. The children crow in love with rockets and the golden glow. But it reminds me of a savage sight. The city turned to cinders in a night. It was a Sunday, December 29, in 1940. Aren't the fireworks fine? Yes. Yes, my child. But your papa recalls the golden rain that fell about St. Paul's. The whistling sky, the tumbling bricks and steel. The city soon was one great Catherine wheel. And in the morning, 
on the smoking hill. What used to be the Barbican was nil. Now there were vistas none had thought to see. Moorgate to Aldersgate, the eye flew free. From Whitbread's brewery they saw St. Giles. The church looked back across the crumbled piles. Not many slept in Barbican that night, but Whitbread's guard was ready for the fight. And those grey horses, calm and stately still, as for the speaker, safely did their drill. And so, but you're not listening, my son. Thank God for you, all fireworks are for fun. But then, you know, 300 years ago, there was a grander accidental show. This was the city, sadly short of bricks, that fed the flames in 1666. Old London Bridge, which stood in London mud through six rough centuries, through fire and flood. And old St. Paul's, whose lean and lofty spire was lost by lightning long before the fire. Poor London, for what villainy or vice must you endure such tribulation twice? And in the city then men used to dwell. Their daily bread was here, their bed as well. John Milton lived in it, their finest man, and watched it burning from the Barbican. John Bunyan, too. Maybe they used to meet and chatter poetry in Chiswell Street. They may have met a youngster called Defoe, who wrote a book called Robinson Crusoe. And Isaac Watts, whose hymns we still revere. O oh God, our help in ages past was here. In Bunhill Fields, the pilgrim Bunyan lies, and at St. Giles, the bird of paradise. Such were the neighbor's boy with whom you'd mix when London burned in 1666. High winds were merciless to wooden walls and swept the tender timbers of St. Paul's. All halls, all churches perished in the blaze. It left us little of the ancient days. Two-thirds of all the dwelling places fell, some of the houses on the bridge as well. No place to pray in all the smoking miles, but east, outside the wall, still stood St. Giles. London was desolate, but London then was blessed by fortune with the wizard Red. How oft in British history we find the darkest need brings out the brightest mind. There is a little house beside the Thames where great Sir Christopher designed his gems. From there, across the river, year by year, he saw his masterpiece, St. Paul's appear. Meanwhile, as in the bright herbaceous bed, fair flowers lift, in turn a lofty head. From fifty churches roasted in the fire arose a slim, inimitable spire. These we have crowded with our concrete walls, but no man yet looks down upon St. Paul's. And you and I, from this high dome, look down on all the pomp and circumstance in town. Far off is Parliament, you see, Big Ben, where England taught them how to govern men. There runs the river, like a twisting flame, a little river, but a mighty name. River of Wren, and long before his day, River of Shakespeare, just across the way. River of Oxford, Windsor, Westminster. River of Nelson. Drake and Frobisher. There's gracious Greenwich, name of golden worth for all who read the skies or roam the earth. The Cutty Sark, 
the Clipper Queen ashore. We do not build such beauties anymore. Blackwall beyond, the home of cruise and quest, from which the Mayflower sailed into the west. Drake went this way, new friends or foes to seek. So did some little ships in Dunkirk week. And now look north, the Barbican. You see why fireworks do not much appeal to me. Behold the desert. There was no great haste, for who will hurry to improve a waste? And we must sympathize with modest men who had to follow in the steps of red. At least, to give the enemy his due, he left us here and there a novel view. There was no itch to screens and poles again, and cautious counselors the arts restrain. And so we cleaned the desolation's face, but for long years put nothing in its place. But nature, less inhibited than man, is always ready with her own sweet plan. The birds, the breeze, with seeds from who knows where, did more than any alderman would dare. They grew strange gardens where the bombs had been and London pride adorned the sorry scene. But architects abhor a vacuum, and in the jungle bees begin to hum. First came the offices in monster blocks, as if a giant built a chocolate box. But then, for each new office must be found how many places on the underground, how many roads be widened far away that you may drive to duty every day, how many aching ulcers will explode from all the tease and torment of the road. Then see, each morning, how your office pants across the bridges, regimented acts. See how at evening, through the fog or rain, they bustle back across the bridge again. See how, like cattle for the butcher bound, they jostle battle on the underground. Two hells a day, and then to fill the cup, the cost of hell is always going up. Like cattle? That's a silly thing to say. No animal would stand it for a day. But then, our betters, in their costly cars, must jostle too, with other jaguars. This is a madness of the master races. We live, we labor, in such different places. But the wild savage cultivates his nuts at some convenient distance from the huts. The city swarms with busy souls all day. Tonight, 5,000 of the souls may stay. From these old facts, new fancy bred a scheme. The city corporation nursed a dream. New Barbican's a city on its own that is not built for business alone. Here, like the farmer, you may win your bread, take lunch and tea and dine and go to bed. No bolted breakfasts fatal to the spleen, no frantic dashes for the 8.15, no getting home, the daily fret and fear. For happy laborers, your home is here. Forget the brolly, park the bowler hat, here is the office, there the comfy flat. Here is a library, and shops, and schools, and quiet walks, green trees, and lily pools. Here you may love and marry, and indeed, if you will pardon the expression, breed. And never was a plan that got so far to separate the walker from the car. You will parade your cloisterly abode, and spurn the traffic on the lowly road. Your car will have a happy home like you, but not one motor car will spoil your view. Those black, wet whales with which the streets abound will decently be harbored underground. And then, your petrol payment should be light. You will need less to get about at night. There is a public house beside the lake. There will be chemists if you ail or ache. 
cafes and restaurants, but fancy not that soul and intellect have been forgotten. There is a vicarage, and as for mind, your city is an Athens, less refined. Music and art are residents like you, and there'll be a theatre. No, there'll be two. Last, old St. Giles, John Milton at his side, not far from Dewin Street where Milton died. May some new Milton by no foe restrained make magic verse in Barbican regained. Who knows? New Barbican may light a flare that points a path to cities everywhere. God gave the road. But in the days behind, we won some honor for the English kind. There must be richness in the battered walls that bred the Londoner beside St. Paul's. In this strong soil of faith and fortitude, behold one blossom of the rose renewed. You've got to get out, get out and about, to see old London town. No more sinners, round here or snow or found. All the birds in Leicester Square, they've driven up the ground. You've got to get out, get out and about. I'm a cockney and it makes me proud. A all your voice to you is go and ever look around. A fool they pulls the old lace down. Oh, take it, you've got to get out. Get out in the bar. To see old London town. In the blinking snack bar, their coffee makes me cough. They charge you one and six for snap for all for mother prop. You've got to get out. Get out in the bar. I'm a poppy and it makes me proud. If you like Piccadilly, go and have a butcher's hookah. A poor they pulls the old place down around your ear roll. A poor they pulls the old place down.